book you. You know, there's a lot of shows with guys heading out into the winter to go on trips with as little gear as possible, taking just a, a Q-tip and a toothpick to prove that they can survive. This is not one of those. I've got every piece of gear that I think will help keep me warm and make for a comfortable winter camping experience. And I'm Hello, YouTube. Jim with you. I want to go out tomorrow and the forecast high is to be about 31 degrees and it's supposed to get down into the low 20s at night. I want to not just find a tolerable degree of dealing with the cold. I actually want to see if by putting together all my winter gear, I can be truly comfortable. So let's start back here in this corner. Got a pair of down insulated booties. Got a little bit of a hard rubber sole on the bottom of them, but not much. Got to have camp well established before I put those on. And they are on top of my hammock gear 20 degree top quilt for my hammock. But I'm not taking a hammock. I'm taking my tent. MSR NX2 tent. I actually want to see about camping on snow. The forecast calls for anywhere from 2 to 8 inches of snow. Firewood is going to be important. I'm going to bring my Sven saw. And I'm also going to bring a camp axe. I don't have that down here, but going to need a lot of firewood because there's a lot of darkness at this time of year. It's still early January. And I'm going to need a comfortable place to sit. So I'm bringing my Helinox chair. But if you've never tried one of these chairs, what you'll realize is that it's very much like a hammock in that you can get cold butt really quick. So I'm also bringing my Z seat to use as insulation in the chair. Moving next door, my utility bags, uh, spares and repairs, fire starting kit, first aid kit, nothing exciting there. This is a new acquisition just this morning. It's just a standard Walmart blue foam pad. I've seen a number of videos where they tell you that doubling up on sleeping pads is important. And for sleeping, I've got my X-Pad pillow, and then that is a Thermarest Neo Air sleeping pad, large size. And it is sitting on a Marmot sawtooth sleeping bag, I believe, rated for 15 degrees. So that's pretty much the sleep system going to have the blue Walmart pad on the bottom and then the Thermarest Neo Air and then the Marmot sleeping bag and then if, if necessary I'll use the top quilt on top of the sleeping bag. For sleeping I'm going to have, let's get this head out of the way, these rather heavy wool socks plus a bit of kit from my canoe tripping. These are neoprene socks they say they're titanium, but, you know, marketing. So, anyway, they're neoprene socks, loose-fitting, should fit nicely over the wool socks. Have a wool beanie that I can put on. And my winter buff, love that thing. That thing absolutely does as much to hold in heat as any other piece of gear that I own. If you don't have a winter buff, strongly recommend that. But, push comes to shove... I have a smart wool balaclava that I'll use. I don't like using these. They get uncomfortable after not too long a period of time, but in order to be comfortable in these temperatures, I'm willing to give it a shot if need be, but this would be a last resort. But one thing that I did do on a camping trip in the winter not too long ago, threw one of these Hot Hands hand warmers in the bottom of the sleeping bag. There's actually three of them in here, and that just worked wonders. Absolutely love that. So, base layers. I've actually got a pair of socks and a pair of sock liners, a pair of wool socks, a pair of sock liners. Two sets. If my feet get wet for any reason, I want to have the ability to get a dry sock liner and socks. Merino wool base layer, just a standard multi-purpose 
Marmot Windridge base layer. For gloves, I've got these glove liners, they're called. They work just fine as lightweight gloves, but they fit inside these larger um, gauntlet style gloves that I'll be bringing along. And in addition to the gauntlet style gloves, I've also got these mittens that I'll be bringing. Sitting around camp, I've got this heavier Marmot 800 fill power down puffy. And then I've got this synthetic Marmot midweight jacket that I'm going to be using as well. And both of these are going to be under just a kind of a standard REI uh, rain wind shell. So I'll have these two jackets available in addition to a, a rain shell. Back here in the back underneath, I've got some long gaiters. Again, the snow is not forecast to be that deep, but these are calf high gaiters, and I'll be taking these uh, because of the warmth, not uh, just to keep the snow out, but because of the warmth factor that you get from wearing gaiters. Moving back to the front for water storage, I've got 32 ounce Nalgene in this insulated sleeve. I've got a Hydro Flask, also 32 ounces, insulated. This is just a DIY Reflectix Cozy for Mountain House meals, whatever. This trip I'm taking my white gas stove, MSR Whisper Light, MSR white gas fuel bottle. These are the windscreens for the stove, lighter, repair kit for the stove, and this, this kettle I'm planning on taking, but with all the rest of this, I might start running out of space in the pack. And if I do run out of space in the pack, this is the first thing that's going to go. My pack, by the way, is going to be my 58 liter Osprey Exos. But down here in front, got the electronics section. This is a Nutrient NT120R power device. Two USB port, charges two USB ports, 12,000 milliamps. Fits great in this old camera bag, along with the uh, cords go in this outer pocket. Can charge my Sony DSC HX80 and my Black Diamond Revolt headlamp. Love this thing. Order. And also for lighting, I've got my Thrunite Archer flashlight. This thing is great, super bright, works a long time on uh, batteries. I, I don't know that I've needed to change the batteries in that yet, but when you want to really uh, cast aside the darkness and see what's going after your food bag, that's the thing to have. And I'll be taking my Garmin Enreach Mini, uh, mostly because I don't know if this is going to be a one-night trip or a two-night trip. And I need to be able to get a message to my wife letting her know uh, if I'm staying for a second night. And also, before I make the decision to stay for a second night, I'm going to want to get an updated weather forecast for my location. And this will give me an updated weather forecast. And speaking of location for all this, I'm planning on going back up to the Osabo River, the north side, this time the walk-in campsites as opposed to the canoe campsites that I showed in a previous video. So that is the gear bomb for all the pieces of winter kit that I have that I think might be useful. And I also brought along my 70 liter canoe duffel pack. It's got my mid-sized camp axe, my backpacking snow shovel, and my large tripod in it. And yeah, we're getting close. And I got the truck locked into four wheel drive. And very glad to have it. Drive's over. We're there. And there's it.
first moment when you get out of your vehicle and you get a chance to hear the place. Sounds like some geese or something down there. There's about two inches of crunchy snow on the ground, maybe three. Nothing drastic. But time to get the pack on, head on down, find the campsite. 39.7 pounds. All right, this is the path to the campsite. came from down that way. I was the first one. My footprints are the only one. And we're at the campsite. This is going to do nicely. There's the view looking out over the pond. Have the right kind of fire pit. This is the kind of fire pit, once you get the snow out of it, you can actually get some heat out of it. And, bonus, someone left some firewood. Looks like something they bought. But here's the view. All of these trees are very healthy, but they have sap. If you watch my gear hammock video, you might remember that I mentioned hanging your pack on a tree with sap. So fortunately I found a spot without. But I'm thinking I'm going to put the tent right in here somewhere. Doesn't look too unlevel. I thought about over here and I may yet do that, but I'm a little concerned that there might be ice under that snow. Well, that's the view on out. Well, let's get set up. Twist around this time to lock it off. Tent gear hammock set up, ready. Footprint. Holes. Stakes are in the bag with the pole. This would have the door opening out to this direction. And instead, I think I want the door to go that way so I have a view of the fire, fire ring. coming off the lake. All right, now 
The concern that I have is that the ground is going to be too frozen to drive stakes into and there isn't enough snow for a snow anchor. There are no big rocks around here that I can use, so now it's time to find out. These are the stakes I'm using, these groundhog, I think they're called Y stakes. Let's find out. Not down very far, but that certainly ought to do. The other kind of stake I've got are just these little aluminum hook things. I have my doubts about this. I'll give it a shot. even better than the first one. Okay. Good thing about the ground being so frozen is you don't have to drive them down far for them to get a good grip. And by and body. get your tent all set up only to find that you had the doors going the wrong way? I hate that. Now some of you may be wondering why I'm bothering to set up the tent body at all when there's obviously no chance of bugs. And come back to the whole premise of this trip. It's to be as comfortable as possible. I'm thinking that even if it's just three, four, or five degrees, having the tent body is another layer of insulation that may very well add just a little bit of warmth. Again, the priority on this trip is comfort, not weight. I should mention that aside from some footprints in the snow that were probably made yesterday, I haven't seen any sign at all of anyone else being out here. Gotta love it. <sighs> okay, let's clean things up a bit. So getting in and out of the tent, I don't want to have all that snow tracking in and out. I didn't want to uh, try to keep the inside of the tent dry. I use the shovel to clear away from the front of the tent. Got a little piece of Tyvek down there and I should be able to keep a lot of the snow out. All right, we're getting there. You know, another nice thing about winter camping, is you can leave the tent door wide open without worrying about bugs getting in there. Time to start unpacking the sleeping bag and let that start getting fluffed up. This is the food bag.
and just hang this on here as a temporary measure. Close. Chair. We're using that a little bit. Sleeping pad. This cook pot, mud. Water, insulated uh, bottle. You know, I'm going to put this in the tent. Another water bottle. Temperature was 25 degrees on the truck when I got here. So I'm not too worried about things freezing up just yet. And sleeping bag and hammock gear top quilt. Had this half liter of bottle for drinking while I'm going. No signs of it freezing yet. Except maybe the cap. Easy to get dehydrated in the winter. Just got the sleeping arrangements set up. Got the thermarest inflated and the sleeping bag and the top quilt out. There's the clothes. So now I think it's time to go explore and see what we can do to bolster the firewood situation. I do believe there is plenty of dead and down wood around here because of the time of year. Let's look around. Yeah, down there. Lots of thin softwood, I'm thinking. It might even be a creek over there. Oh yeah, there's a lot of good dry softwood down here that's been held up off the ground. Oh, and even more over there. I'm hoping that that firewood that was left at the campsite is hardwood. So I gather up some of this pine to get things started and should have a pretty good fire. Let's look around at some more. Let's go up here, see what we got. Just up over here, got a lot of down pine. And right around this corner, Yeah, uh, it's got leaves on it. Just came back to the main trail. Walked just 10 yards down this way. And then right up over here. Whole lot of down wood in here. All right. Go back to camp. Get my saw. Start gathering up some of this.
frozen inside. Been busy gathering wood. That's the stuff that was here when I got here. And I got these pieces. All of them dead and down. Some of them may be a bit too far gone, and some of them may be wet from being too close to the ground. Won't know till we try it. Now the other thing is, I started getting a bit too warm gathering that wood, so time to chill out for just a minute. The wind is coming from here across the lake, so I think I want to try to set up one of my small tarps as a windbreak before I get the fire going. Got this small brown tarp that I made for canoe tripping to give me a quick shelter when it sprinkles. I don't want to really bother setting up anything big. Let's see how it works for a windbreak out here. Stakes and cordage. some encouragement. Let's try this one. These are just some cheap aluminum stakes that I had left over from something I don't really care about them. But it's definitely going to bend before it goes in. Alright. Well, just had the first significant disappointment of the trip. I was unable to rig this tarp anywhere that was really handy. I mean, this is a little bit helpful, but not much. Without a way to get a stake driven into this icy ground, I'm really at the mercy of wherever I can find trees I can use. And you can see by how this is blowing out that there is a fair amount of breeze coming in off the lake right now. And I've had to jury rig it between these trees, so it's giving me a little bit of a windbreak from over here, but I really wanted to be much more over this way. So there's the fire pit, and then there's the tarp over there, but I really wanted to string it right along and through here. Need a way to drive stakes into frozen ground. Well, the temperature started to drop. 418 in the afternoon. Got at most uh, 59 minutes of daylight left. At least 59 minutes until official sundown. Spiffy new watch. Uh, time to get going on this wood. Alright, I went over to one of those down pine trees and snapped off a bunch of the branches that were sticking up and these seem to be much better. Time for a status update. It's about 13 to 5 right now and I've been working on uh, getting the wood set up. Let me turn you around here and give you a look. The wind is coming from over here. So I'm planning to sit here and then I've laid three pieces of wood and the bits of bark down as a moisture barrier. And then I've got my really fine stuff there. 
got that firewood that somebody left here all in a ring around the fire pit to get the ice melted off of it and warm it up a bit. Then I've got my thumb size stuff over here, moving on up to more wrist size stuff. Actually, more like my daughter's wrist than mine. And then over here, I got my uh, wrist size stuff that I've been cutting off of these pieces. It is six minutes to official sundown. Got my fire kit. In my fire kit, I have tonight's entertainment. Homemade fire starter. This is a paper egg crate filled with oak sawdust and shavings and then melted paraffin wax with a little cotton ball on top just to give it something to grab hold of and light. I've done all the bushcrafty sort of things but remembering that this trip is supposed to be about how comfortable can you be out here and use one of my homemade ecologically sound fire starters. And a lighter. Your lighter has duct tape wrapped around it, doesn't it? I'm guessing I should have had that lighter in my pocket warming up. Didn't have quite enough gas to gas pressure to really get going. Well, we learn by doing. Never did change out my socks. I would get the fire going. See if I couldn't get my boots dried up a bit. Otherwise, I felt I ran the risk of putting dry socks in damp boots and just getting my dry socks damp. I should have this bundle over here by me. I think I'm going to hold up there on uh, using this stuff. I just might want to have a fire in the morning. In the old Boy Scout pyramid tonight. After I get a base of coals going, I'll shift over to more of a long fire sort of thing. Well, I've been sitting here tending the fire for the last 10 or 15 minutes. It's now quite dark out there. And I don't know if you can hear the hissing from the wood, but there is some wet wood in there trying to burn. I could tell the instant that the little starter cube that I made burned out. Fire's going to take some tending tonight. I heard some small animal half hour ago screaming for its life the other side of this inlet over here, probably a couple hundred yards away. And there's another animal that I haven't been able to identify the track. It's about the size of a raccoon at a guess, but the fingers aren't long enough to be a raccoon. I'm a little concerned it might be a skunk. It's too big to be a squirrel. I don't need to have a skunk skunking around my camp. I did do a proper job of hanging the food bag. It's right here behind me. A good 10 feet off the ground, five feet away from the tree. But I'm not worried about bears, I'm worried about skunks. Down there. These have got ice on them. Let's get down here and start getting them thawed out. Oh yeah. Ah. Ah. Much better. Much better. 521. 
not really hungry for dinner yet. I'm going to have packet gourmet Texas State Fair Choi. One of my favorites. Alright, well I'm going to finish getting this fire going. Check back in with you later. Starting to kick out a little bit of warmth now. Toes still feel cold and wet though. And the boots are still damp. Well, it's 541. I suppose I need to start thinking about dinner. Where I'm going to set up the stove. Probably right here. I just got in the tent, swapped out my wet socks and boots for the canoe neoprene socks and the down booties. So far, it's still cold. The neoprene socks were quite cold. Hopefully it warms up. Got the water on for the Texas State Fair chili. And one thing I'm realizing is I should have brought the wider pot. This pot is just barely bigger than the burner. I got it turned way down, but I've never cooked with this stove with it down this low before, so we'll find out. But Texas State Fair chili coming up. The water in my hydro flask had gotten down to about room temperature. I've got most of that on to boil. And after that gets heated up, I'm going to put it back in the hydro flask and then put it back probably in some of my clothing to insulate it. I don't want to put this one in the sleeping bag. It's all metal. I'm going to have some hot chocolate in about a half hour or so, maybe an hour, just to uh, give my internal furnace some fuel to work with through the night. But, fire feels good. My feet are comfortable finally, and not doing too badly right now. So, am I comfortable? Eh, I'm not uncomfortable, but uh, you know, the exposed parts are cold. Good morning, here in the tent. Just finished having a cup of coffee. It's about four minutes until sunrise, but I don't think there's going to be a sunrise. It's going to be cloudy again today. Made it through the night, obviously, and one immediate observation is that swans make lousy neighbors. They have been partying all night long. And I was a bit disappointed in my sleeping bag. It's supposed to be rated for temperatures down in the teens, and I think it only got into the mid-20s last night. Haven't been able to get an update yet. The $10 blue Walmart pad, the Ozark Trails pad, sure saved the day. After I'd been in the in the sleeping bag for a half hour, I could feel I was lo losing heat into the ground, and I slid that uh, cheap Walmart pad underneath my Thermarest NeoAir, and that fixed that problem. That was very nice. But the sleeping bag was, was a major disappointment in that uh, after about an hour and a half, I could tell that I was getting cold spots all along the top of it. So I pulled up the uh, hammock gear top quilt. <laughs> what a difference that made. I tell you, you put uh, a 20 degree hammock gear top quilt on top of a sleeping bag and if you're generating any body heat, you're going to be warm. That was, that was very nice and then uh, slept quite well after that. Well, Here's what I'm looking at this morning.
The sun should rise over there somewhere. You can hear the swans. That's what I've been hearing all night long. All right, let's make some breakfast. Already had coffee, of course. <clears throat> no way would I try to do this without coffee. Breakfast skillet. <clears throat> and just barely see those marks in there. Mountain House meals, the do not eat packet is almost always at the top, and the packet gourmet is almost always at the bottom. Simple consequence of the way they put the stuff in the bag, maybe. Nope. Okay, she's hot. Should have had it in the cozy to start with. <clears throat> Four minutes, stir it. Eight to nine minutes, eat it. And we'll start the stopwatch. All right. Breakfast is cooking. Now we wait. Love a long handled spoon with Mountain House. Well, finished breakfast. Just made my second mug of coffee. And uh, there's a point down here. I think we'll go explore that a little bit. Maybe shoot some video from the point across the way. And let's take the tripod. lived in there but I don't see any tracks it is the middle of January 
in Michigan, and the lakes are not frozen. That is extremely unusual. Well, last night I burned three of those logs that I found frozen into the ground when I got here. And I'm leaving this piece of wood and this kindling. So I always feel better about leaving more firewood than was here when I got here. Having high quality fuel wood even though it was frozen in the ground, it was very nice last night. Those three logs burned a long time and generated a lot of heat. Well, packing up, and I thought it would be a good time to start talking about what worked and what didn't. So let me turn you around and I'll start showing you some of the stuff that uh, I liked and some of the stuff I didn't. So the chair, absolutely worth it. Sitting around the fire last night uh, made all the difference in the world. Logs were not available, and just standing by the fire would have been a non-starter. The MSR Whisper Light Stove worked like a champ. No issues with cold uh, slowing down the feed like you sometimes get with propane. And all the wood out here is cold. I could have used the twig stove, but this is the way to go. The down booties, the thing to know is they worked great last night, but hanging around the fire, you can see here on the heel, there was some wetness that was starting to creep up into the down. And so using these in an area where there is even more snow, I wouldn't advise it. I tried to stay to the packed spots where I had made a trail with these, but it wasn't always possible. So yeah, definitely good for last night, but a bit uh, dicey about going forward. So don't know how I feel about these as a multi-night solution. The other thing about the down booties is I used the canoe socks last night. And the canoe socks, once I got them warmed up, worked great. But when I took them off last night to go to bed, uh, found out that my feet were quite wet inside there. So they are quite waterproof and kept uh, the moisture contained, albeit it was warm, but it was still quite damp. This is that little tarp that I strung up last night without the ability to get some stakes down into frozen ground and or the exact right configuration of trees with the wind, useless. Lucy light, solar light. Tried using this at bedtime last night and the output was next to nothing and lasted only about a minute, so loser. Little snow shovel, yeah, it was handy. Um, it was a bit excessive for the amount of snow that we've got here today. And my Mountain Hardware 70 liter gear duffel. It does take a lot of gear to go winter camping. And I could absolutely see using this gear duffel in some kid's sled and pulling that along behind me. That would work out great. Could actually offload quite a bit more from the pack. For water, I've gone through two quarts, and I do mean quarts. They're both 32 ounce bottles. Both bottles were filled with hot water when I left home. The Hydro Flask 
bottle, the vacuum bottle, was room temperature, let's say, comfortable room temperature, 70, 75 degrees, I guess. Last night when I opened it up, the Nalgene bottle with the neoprene sleeve was cold. Not surprising, I guess. I took most of the water from the Hydro Flask last night and heated it up on the stove to almost boiling, if not boiling. Poured it back into the Hydro Flask last night, and this morning it was still fairly warm. So that was a pretty impressive performance for that. I left a little bit of water in the Nalgene in the sleeve, and it it was not frozen this morning inside the tent. So the temperature in the tent, if it got down to freezing or below, it wasn't enough to freeze an ounce or two of water in the Nalgene bottle. Taking the tent down, got the stakes out. That is where I was sleeping last night seems quite certain that a lot of my body heat was going in to creating that melt line right there. Now the question is what to do with my duffel. This is the point at which I wish there was more snow and I had a little sled. But I'm just going to try carrying it. Over the shoulder. See how that goes. Alright, let's hit the road. Made it back to the truck. This is how I ended up carrying this thing most of the time. It's acceptable for short distances, but very annoying otherwise. Really need a sled if you're going to try to carry that. So, trip's over. Um, what did I think about it? Was it rewarding? Kind of. Uh, it was worthwhile, absolutely. I have been curious about testing my winter gear for a long time and I was very happy to get the opportunity to finally do that. The temperatures never got to be that cold, mid-20s at worst. So it was uh, a good test but in what I would call moderate winter conditions. How would things have gone if there had been much lower temperatures, say single digits or low teens? It would have been a bit more dicey. If the wind had kicked up a lot more, again, it would have been much more challenging. There are certainly a number of things that I can do with my gear now that I know more about it. Having the top quilt from the hammock, absolutely. Um, the inexpensive blue sleeping pad, absolutely critical gear. The chair, of course, love that. I only ever used the glove liners. I never used the mittens, never used the gauntlet gloves. But again, had the temperatures been much colder, and they certainly should be at this time of year, or had the wind been kicking a lot more, yeah, would have used the bigger gloves, the mittens, and the heavy down jacket. I only ever wore this shell and that medium synthetic marmot jacket. Never found a need to wear more than that. So that's a wrap for this trip. Very worthwhile. Very glad I got out. Was very pleased to explore this part of my state and look forward to the next trip. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. The subscriber list is growing. And give me a like if you liked it. Feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you. I'll see you next time.